I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game, so it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. So, here we are. We're back. We're back on our Zero to Hero character. And I have very, very good news. Finally, we have access to the trading post. You know, we've been unlocked. And that actually allows us to do something very important. In fact, one of the most important things that we're ever going to do on this account. Mastery of what we're about to do is going to allow us to conquer the universe, dominate the game, and accomplish all of our goals, right? And that is selling stuff. Selling stuff to other players in particular, right? And, uh, well, the good news is it's very, very simple. Yeah, not the most complicated thing in the universe, uh, but it is very, very powerful. Like, playing the economy and understanding how to get gold out of, like, all the materials that you have is incredibly important to understanding Guild Wars 2. As you play through the game, you play through the world, you're going to be gathering loads of this stuff. It's going to end up in your bank, in your material storage. All this stuff is probably where a huge amount of your gold is, right? Like, all of these items here, they're probably worth gold. And as a result of that, we can go ahead and sell them to other players, then use them to buy things. You can buy almost everything with gold. And we're going to be buying a lot of gear today to finish setting up our character and getting us ready to be maximally effective, kind of at that uh, at that end game point, so we can be really useful and complete all the content that we want to do. Right? We want to get into stuff like strike missions, be really strong in open world, even better at soloing things, providing value in group events, all that kind of good stuff. So there, there really is nothing super crazy here. If you want to sell things. You right click and then boom, sell on trading post. Now, you're gonna have some options here. Now, if you're lazy like me, you can just sell instantly, right? And honestly, if the prices aren't that different, you can just go ahead and do this, right? Not the end of the universe, you can do that. However, for some items, what you're going to see is that there's gonna be a pretty big difference between the buy price and the sell price. This is where you want to go ahead and put a sell order. For example, on these Onyx Lodestones, the sell price is what? Eight silver um, higher than the buy price? In this case, yeah, we probably wanna get that eight silver, right? That's 15 eight silvers. You can see here that if we were to kind of do it like this and go like this and sell instantly, we'd get 7 gold, 46 silver. But if we did sell orders, we'd get 8 gold and 69 silver, right? This is obviously a very good thing for us to try and do. Now, the other thing here is that there is tax when you're selling to other players. This doesn't usually matter that much. Realistically, you're still going to get more profit than selling to the vendor in almost all situations. But do keep an eye on that because you can potentially get some better value um, on a very few amount of items if you sell to the vendor. So make sure you're always kind of checking the prices of how much you're actually selling these for. If there's some very low price items, it's just better to vendor them. You'll just end up losing money on taxes. The tax though, don't worry, it is a good thing. Uh, it turns out that this is basically why the Guild Wars 2 economy doesn't explode, so don't worry about that too much. But yeah, anyway, in this particular case, we're just going to go ahead and sell some stuff uh, to get ourselves some gold. We've got six gold right now, we need a lot more. I'm going to insell these rares because, again, it's very close. You could list these if you want to, but I actually want to get some gold right now. And that's the other advantage of selling instantly, right? You immediately get your gold. Whereas if you don't sell immediately, it's going to take you a little bit of time uh, to actually get your gold. So, yeah, I I'm going to cause a lot of physical pain to some of the trading post enthusiasts here. But I'm going to sell a few things instantly here. But just be aware of the way that this actually works um, so that you don't kind of uh, meme yourself. Again, you can definitely get a lot more profit in this case. And remember, always under cut people. Look, now we're going to be evil. We're going to undercut people by one copper. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. We'll undercut here on these memories of Aurene. And another really nice feature here, by the way, if you want to see how much profit you make after tax, just go ahead and mouse over the total price. And you can see here, I mouse over the price and it will say 19 gold, 5 silver and 46 copper. So we can go ahead and list that. There we go. 
I mean, just keep selling a few more of these items, because again, I want a bit of gold right now. Uh, so I will install a few things, because again, I want some capital. I want to get right into it and get this gear underway. Get our build fully sorted out. But yeah, we're going to keep undercutting everyone. Like the evil, horrible person that we are. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to go big. All right, we can just install those. Okay, these. Yep, yeah, we can install those as well. That's fine. Can probably get a few of these exotics out of here as well. See, this is a great example of an item where we wouldn't really want to intersell this, right? Because we can see here that the buy price is actually nearly half of the sell price. So in this particular instance, we definitely want to go ahead and place some sell orders here. Uh, because these sell orders are going to, they probably will fill. It's, you know, it's a, a, you know, an item that people might want here. You can see there's a good amount of orders here, like on either side of this. So we can probably actually manage to sell these items uh, over time. Then away we go. Now, the good news is, is that if you don't manage to sell your item, let's imagine that we come back in a few days and this salt spray axe hasn't sold. The listing fee is 5% and the exchange fee is 10%. So we can act, we're only putting down 5% of the item's cost when we actually put it on the trading post. So we can actually cancel that and actually get, you know, and not basically eat another, a full 15%. We'll only eat 5%. So we can just relist it a little bit lower uh, if we need to, or simply instantly sell it. If we can't be bothered. That's the advantage there, right? We can just go ahead and cancel it. So if it wasn't selling, we go over to my transactions here on the trading post and just go ahead and cancel that. And we'd be able to get our item back and we only lose 5%. So that's another thing you've got to watch out for there as well. And there is no time limit. You can literally leave this for years. There's actually some really funny screenshots on the subreddit and stuff like that, where people have had like a, a sell order going since the start of the game, right? <laughs> They're hoping, you know, they're just hoping that eventually someone's going to buy their item or someone's going to sell them their item at an insanely discounted price. <laughs> but yeah, and I know it's going to sound super weird. No joke. This is actually probably, listen up, listen up. This is the most important skill you can have for progressing your account in Guild Wars Suit. That is not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. Understanding how to get gold out of your activities by keeping track of your materials in your bank, understanding what you want to sell, right? And who you want to sell it to and how you want to sell it. This is the name of the game, right? This is how you make gold in Guild Wars 2. And ultimately, gold is so tied into account progression um, that this is ultimately going to be a really core part of how you're going to progress your account in Guild Wars 2 is selling stuff, right? And using the trading post. Um, look, let's have some perspective here, right? So these Onyx Lodestones, if we sold these to a vendor, the vendor would pay us 9 silver and 45 copper. If we sell it to players, we can actually get eight gold. That is literally nearly 100 times the, the, the profit. So the, the NPC, they're giving us a bad deal here, right? And this is a mistake a lot of new players make is that, you know, in, in other games, right, you're going to sell things, um, you know, you're going to sell things to a vendor, right? That's what you do. You know, you get your loot, you sell your trash, your junk items, your materials to a vendor, right? And then boom, easy money, no problem, right? In Guild Wars 2, this is going to go very badly for you. Uh, do not do that. Make sure that you're selling your stuff on the trading post. Because if you do this, that's how you're going to get rich. That's how you're going to make your money and get your account going like crazy. Oh, yeah. And we'll just get these uh, sell orders going. And we'll just kind of clean this stuff out. Yeah, we'll do a mixture of buy and sell, because again, I need some capital right now, actually, because we're going to be buying a little bit of gear in a moment. So we'll just do a little bit of that. A little bit of both here, in this case. Just remember to undercut people, because again, we're evil, and we want our stuff to sell quickly, right? Because obviously, the, the lowest sell order is the one that's going to be prioritized. So kind of uh, making sure you're right at the top there is where you're going to be squeezing all that value. Squeeze that value out, chat. It's going to be great. And we just keep selling here. Yeah, that's fine. We can just install there. I'm just going to keep selling all of our items. Get them out of here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and yeah, that's actually a great tip as well. If you're ever like, hmm, what should I sell? You can always go in your inventory here, uh, the sell items here, and you just click this price thing here, and it will list the highest price item that you have at the top. So you can go, okay, I should probably sell my Moonshank. There we go. Right, we've got these four wins prize bags. Yeah, we should probably sell these, right? 
That's some good money right there. That's three gold. We're rolling in it. We're absolutely rolling in it. And you can kind of see what you've got that's valuable because as a new player, you aren't necessarily going to know like, wait, how am I supposed to know? What are my really good items? Good question. You probably won't know what your really good items are. But good news. The game can tell you and the game will tell you if you go ahead and play around like this. The I am ever Nashblade trick. Yeah, I mean, we you could also do that as well, right? I mean, yeah, so this can actually do this and it will get... So if you type in here, I am Evan Nashblade with spaces. That's basically... The, the, that name is the name of basically the owner of the trading company in in-game lore, right? And you can get a slightly more compressed view here. You may not like this. This might be a little bit too small. As you can see, things are a bit shrunk down over here. You could, of course, improve that with the interface size uh, to make it a little bit bigger. I can give you like a bit of a broad overview of all your items now, like those giant icons there that can make things a little bit better. But there you go. A little bit of a little uh, bonus tipperino there, so you can really get an idea of what you've got about the place. Of course, I believe this also applies to buying stuff as well. So it just compresses everything down, makes things maybe a little bit more readable, or maybe a little bit less readable, depending on uh, on your opinion. As you can see here, we've got all these items now. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Look at all these things you can buy. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible stuff. And the way you disable that, if you go, wait, I actually hate this. You just type it again in the search bar. Type it again, and bam. Instantly gone, and we're back to normal. So you can just do this. There we go. And you can see that now it will have reverted back to its original form just like that. And now, it's time to buy. It's time to buy some stuff. So if you want to get your gold from the trading post, unsurprisingly... You have to go to a trading post NPC. And this is where the mini-map is very useful, because if you don't have the uh, city layouts memorized, then, well, you're going to have to look for it. The good news is, is that it has a pretty distinctive icon. It's kind of like this uh, this icon here with the scales, like that. So you can just look at that on the mini-map, and then boom, you're over here. We talk to our trader, and we collect our 44 gold. Well, 41 gold, but now we've got 44. And this is going to allow us to actually massively upgrade our SERP. Although we aren't going to have to spend too much gold. So, for those who uh, don't know, I've been playing with the starter gear that you get from boosting your character, which is an excellent setup for basically more or less every profession. You can make something good out of this. It won't be too bad. It will very much be like up there. Uh, some classes better than others, of course. But we're now going to improve it. And I am going to be releasing a series of videos about builds that use this starter gear and spend a little bit of gold, not too much, to actually get to a point where um, you have a build that is very effective and is going to work extremely well uh, into a lot of end game content even, right? Like, like an entry level build that can get you started. You'll be absolutely contributing more than viable for some of this end game content. And well, here's the one that I'd recommend for Guardian. Again, using this Celestial gear, we're going to get ourselves some classic Runes of the Firebrand. And again, this is where you all have to do as I say, not as I do. Because of course, we're live right now. I'm not waiting for buy orders. Screw that. We're insta-buying. Oh, yeah. And again, just like selling on the trading post, you're obviously going to pay a premium if you want to buy immediately. This is really important. So as you can see, I'm going to buy these runes immediately. Um, basically, the, 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 the lowest prices that are currently available. However, you could save a lot of gold, and you should do this if you're certainly early on when you're looking to build up your account. Uh, you can go ahead and place buy orders. So it'll take a little bit of time to fill. As you can see, we'd actually save ourselves... Uh, around like three gold or so by doing that. However, it is worth noting that if you do actually want to just really get into content immediately, ah, screw it. Spend the three gold, leap in, and start blasting no problem. Because again, this is where it does get a little bit more complicated and why I wouldn't overthink this stuff too much actually. In fact, we've already overthunked it way too much. Is that buying stuff like this, buying gear, it's going to actually enable you to earn gold. Because if you've got a really good build, well, you can be more efficient with your gameplay, right? And, and complete more content, right? You've got the tools for the job to complete all sorts of stuff that will actually generate you gold. So getting this stuff sooner rather than later is actually going to be pretty valuable. And there it is. We now have our Firebrand runes. Very, very nice. Firebrand runes activated. And boom, we got some of our gold back because it wouldn't let us buy that stuff. And now we can upgrade our gear. Uh, this is probably a good time to talk about runes. Runes are essentially set bonuses. They can be very powerful, actually, uh, and can potentially be build-defining and, and significantly affect how your build functions. So 
you have six total runes in PvE and World vs. World. Now, do not get tricked here. There used to be a few cases where having like two of e two of three different types of runes was good, or having four of one rune and two of another was good. However, ArenaNet have since normalized it such that if you've got a rune, you want to have all six of that rune. Like it's very much standardized now that you're going to want to dedicate to one rune on your build. It's a very, very common mistake that players will go, ooh, wait, I can have all these different set bonuses. Isn't that so crazy, right? I can have, I can like have two of those, two of those, two of those. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Doesn't really work out in practice anymore. Because again, if you look at the numbers here, even on the rune I've got here, the rune of the guardian, what you'll notice is, is that the numbers early on are very, very low with the toughness and healing power, and the numbers later on, towards the sixth bonus, are much higher, right? 125, 100, and even a little special effect. And this is very common. You'll see that as you go through a rune, the sixth bonus will often have a special bonus that you'll only get for having all six. And just as a little bit of an aside here, I'll quickly demonstrate how this actually looks interface-wise. If we go ahead um, and upgrade this item, we can see here, that our superior rune of the firebrand is, it shows one, right? It's good. We've got that 25 condition damage. But you can see that the two, three, four, five, six, they're all grayed out, right? And that means that we're not getting any of those bonuses, right? It also says one out of six. We have one out of six of those runes. And now you'll also notice that we've lost our bonus from superior rune of the guide. Now it's only five out of six. So this kind of situation is very undesirable. We're kind of getting the worst of both worlds here, right? We're not getting full bonus out of our guardian rune. And we're not getting full bonus, well, anything really, out of our firebrand rune. So this is why you always want to make sure that you have got yourself six out of six runes. Whatever you go for, make sure you get six out of six, because that is how you're going to get the maximum value out of it like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and upgrade that. And now we also want to buy ourselves a sigil for our axe. Uh, I think I, I want to get a staff, actually, in just a moment, because we want to play... Uh, I'm going to be playing kind of a support hybrid star build. So I think we're going to go ahead and buy ourselves a celestial staff. And the way you can search... For gear, there are a few ways you can do this. You can just go ahead and do that by searching for Celestial if you know what you're looking for. But you can also search uh, gear and other items by a bunch of things. If you click on this cog, you can search for what attributes you want. So power, precision, toughness, etc, etc, etc. Then you can also search uh, by what profession it's good for. So in other words, what weapons you can use, right? Like not every profession can use every weapon for example, and what rarity? Are you looking for exotic gear? Are you looking for rare gear? Really, you're probably looking for exotic gear most of the time. Maybe you want to buy some legendaries, 2.8k? A little bit outside of our, uh, <laughs> a little bit outside of our budget right now. And you probably, obviously, a lot of the time, you might be looking for level 80 gear as well. Don't get tricked. There are going to be a few items uh, that actually, uh, that actually might uh, be exotic, but not max level. Uh, and that's obviously, that's going to suck, right? Because a, a lot of the time, actually, a lot of exotic items can actually be more expensive at a low level. Like this ring, for example. You can see it's a level 60 ring. It's actually 9 gold. That's a ripoff, right? And it's actually a level 62 ring. So it's not even that good. Because uh, <laughs> it goes, we're level 80. So make sure that you're looking at what you're buying here. When you're buying your gear. Otherwise, you're going to have a very unfortunate time. Uh, it's not going to be good. Anyway, we're going to pick up our Celestial Staff here. And away we go. Where is it? Where is our Celestial Staff? There we go. Ooh, bit of a tall order here. Again, if you wanted to, you could definitely place a buy order. I'm not going to, though, because I want to play the game right now. <laughs> and it's time for some sigils as well. So the sigils that we have are actually not bad, but I think we can do a little bit better. We absolutely can. We can do a lot better here, I think. We can go ahead and look at the Viper's Firebrand Axe. Well, we want we, we do a lot of burning damage, so we want to go ahead and get a Smoldering Sigil here, actually. Fortunately, that's very, very cheap, actually. There we go. I love to see that. Let's get that in there. Very, very nice. Okay, good. And now we can make our uh, we can make our axe even better than it already is. Wow, look at that. That's actually a big deal, too. 20% burning duration is going to significantly power us up, actually. It's going to juice us up big time, actually. I love to see it. It's incredible. Oh, that's actually a really good point. This is actually a really big mistake that a lot of new players actually make. And I just made it too, because I wasn't paying attention. So when you're looking for gear, this is like an advanced gear finding tactic. 
Here is a really good example. If we wanted to search for some Berserker gear, like this, let's go ahead and get some Berserker armor, then it would go, okay, Berserker's Draconic Coat. And that is 7 gold, 19 silver, and 68 copper. Now, the thing is, is that this gear is crafted, so it's got a lot of materials that go into it, and as a result of that, it can be quite expensive. But here's the thing. This is actually not the cheapest way to get this. Because, of course, other items that may not have Berserker in the name will have Berserker stats, but will be a lot cheaper. And here's a great example here, actually. If we look at this Berserker's heavy antique coat, it's identical to the Draconic coat, except a different skin, but it's a third of the price. But you can actually do better than that. If we go here and we look for what attributes we want, well, Berserker is power, Happy precision... Happy Guild Wars 2 10-year anniversary. Hey, thanks a lot, Nervacat. Power, precision, and ferocity here then what you'll actually find is that you can get a lot better than this. Specifically, we can look at this Devonna's Chest Guard, which not only is a tenth of the price of uh, the items we were looking at before, that seven gold exotic, it also comes with a good upgrade to it. It comes with a rune on it. And it's 10 times cheaper. So whenever you're looking to buy something on the trading post, it's a really good idea to search for the stats that you're looking for right here. So look it up. You know, if you're looking for condition damage, you might look for condition damage. If you're looking for healing, you might look, be looking for healing here. Just find what stats you're looking for and then search this way. If you search the name of the stat, it won't always come up um, with the item, the cheapest possible item, right? It will only search for the name, which is why searching by attributes here can be really, really good, because we could have got it, you know, you can get an insane bargain. And the reason I brought this up is because often, a lot of the time, this is where things do get a little bit complicated. This is maybe a little bit too much for the, uh, for the beginning of the guide here, to be honest, but I just bought a Celestial Staff for 13 gold. But actually, you can go ahead and buy this item on the trading post called an Iron Legion Staff. And this item, you can pick stats. You can buy it and you can pick stats on it. Which means we can go ahead and buy this. And we'll go ahead and do that now and I'll show how that works. So we'll buy this. And what you can do with this uh, item is you can right click on it. And you can customize it. And we can pick any stats we want, including what we're looking for. Which is Celestial, like that. So... Basically, I just paid double for no reason, and this skin is way cooler at the same time. So we can go ahead and do this, and now we have our staff. It looks a little bit fancier, right? And it was half the price as well. And of course, it's even more flexible because we can get any stats we want on it. Now, that I know that, you know, if you're a new player, you're probably going, oh my god, what the hell is going on? This is overwhelming. You're actually right. This is one of the major criticisms that a lot of people have of Guild Wars 2. There's a lot going on. If you... If you make some mistakes, you waste a bit of gold, you're good, it's fine, it's not a problem, you know, it's not the end of the universe. But there are these little neat optimizations that you can do, and once you get a feel for how the game flows and how it all fits together, you're going to get more and more efficient, right? Everyone gets trolled. Hell, I got trolled in literally right now, okay? And as you learn more about the game... And you figure things out and you talk to people and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You'll figure it out. The best way to do this, honestly, is join a community Discord like mine, right? And then ask people, right? Because there are loads of super greasy nerds who are going to be able to tell you literally everything about the game. <laughs> in some of these discords and i think that is going to be a, a really great place uh to learn a little bit about the game and and kind of get these little tips and tricks that players know so just ask people if you aren't sure if you want a little bit of help with being a bit more uh, a little bit more efficient in that regard okay let's go ahead and uh finish going about our setup here and polishing up our build a little bit we've got 32 gold so we've still got a good chunk of cash to spend here. Let's go ahead and finish up uh, this build. So the build that I'm actually going to be using here, by the way, uh, is this build here. It's on. It's going to be on the Hardset website when I'm done. We actually haven't got it there yet. But basically, I'm just building this starter firebrand build, which is just excellent for open world play, solo play, and of course, some entry level instance play as well. 
Uh, so I'm just going to fill this out, finish up this build with some of these sigils. This build is designed to be a damage dealer, but also function as a healer as well, uh, especially for content that is a little bit lower pressure and uh, entry level. You'll be able to heal on this build with absolutely no issue, thanks to our celestial gear and this honor trait line, which is very, very defensive. So as you can see, we're going to finish off our build with another smoldering sigil on our staff, a transference sigil for more healing, because our staff is a healing weapon, uh, and then a bursting sigil on a torch. I'm not actually sure if I can afford all of this, but let's see if we can. Let's see how far we can go. So we can get ourselves this transference sigil, and we need another smoldering sigil here as well. Let's go ahead and grab that. And we would love to get a torch as well. Let's see if we can. Although, actually, I will say that a shield is a perfectly good option for this build as well. But uh, more on that, you can, you know, maybe, maybe we'll, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to post the actual video for this build a little bit later on. This is actually a very flexible build. You can certainly go more aggressive or less aggressive as you want. You know, the torch is a much more offensive option that does a lot more damage. And the shield is a more defensive option that has some more uh, support abilities on it. But will, of course, cost you a little bit of damage per second at the same time. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this uh, all sorted out here. Let's get these uh, sigils on. There we go. <laughs> let's go ahead and get that going. Uh, and then we can finish off this build here. We want to go ahead and grab ourselves a bursting sigil. So let's go ahead and get a torch. Okay, let's see if we can get... Uh, I wonder if there's actually a stat selectable torch. I don't think there is actually. Uh, but then again, maybe the chat knows. I'm gonna just- I'm just gonna ask the chat. I'm terrified that I'm gonna completely screw up here and annihilate it. I don't believe that's the case, so let's go ahead and grab this, uh, bursting sigil real quick. Here we go. Let's go. Oh! See, this sigil is definitely a little bit more expensive. If you're looking to make this build, don't worry about skipping this one. There are actually a few alternatives you could go for. You could go for something like, uh, I think... I think tormenting it would be... Sigil of Torment would be a lot cheaper. This would also be a good one you could go for. Yeah. Oh, wait, never mind. That's also 10 gold. Nice. Honestly, the good sigils are hard to come by, gamers. You know, like, the good sigils, they're a little tricky to get. What can I say? Uh, you know, obviously, they're in high demand, and they have a lot of expensive materials, so they are going to be pretty pricey. But, yeah, you could do a Corruption Sigil, yeah, for open world. A Corruption Sigil uh, is basically a, uh, a category of item that, when you kill something, it powers you up, right? So this is very, very cheap, and you could use this. It will be great for open world. You know, it will actually probably be better than a Bursting Sigil for open world specifically, because this, what this is going to do, is that you'll get another 250 condition damage just by running around killing things. It will stack up, and you'll get this bonus uh, there as well. So that would be another great option if you don't want to splash the 10, uh, the 10 gold. However, it is worth noting that the Bursting Sigil is going to be giving you some very, very high value uh, very, very high value indeed uh, when you kind of get into instance content. You want to, you know, you don't have like infinite enemies to kill to stack that up there as well. But that's how it is. That is how it is. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Do we have a, do we have a, a, a torch potentially? An obsidian torch? We're going to eat it. Actually, you know what? Let's actually be clever here. Uh, so... We're going to, look, we're going to actually learn, we're going to use the lesson that I just taught you guys. So we'll go on torches, and we'll search for stuff that only Celestial has, right? Uh, I think specifically, if we search for expertise and concentration, that should do it. Yeah, there we go. That will actually go ahead and give us Celestial. And yes, we can actually determine that there are no other options there. Maybe there's something stat selectable hiding in there, right? But now that we've put in uh, expertise and concentration, which again, Celestial has both of, right? Uh, we can see here that the Celestial Pearl Brazier is going to be the way to go right now. Let's go ahead and grab that. Boom. Easy 12 gold. Look at that. What a build. What a build. What a monstrous build we have. Get that Soulbound. Get the Bursting Sigil on there. Oh, let's go. Now, the one thing that we actually could do to improve this is actually get a Celestial Axe. Because that's actually the Viper Axe that we got from... Uh, that we got from basically leveling up Firebrand and completing Firebrand. So we actually could uh, make this a little bit better, actually. But yeah, there you go. There you go. Anyway, let's see if we could actually stretch to a Celestial Axe as well. Let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, it would be... Oh, dude, it's such a horrible skin. It's a... This is the problem with some of this gear on the trading post. It's so ugly. But we can actually transmute it because we actually have a few of those. We need to sell a little bit more stuff. If we can sell a few more items, we'll be able to grab that. 
And that would actually fully complete our build, and I will be very, very happy. Then we'll be ready to unleash ourselves into the world, and we can go and practice our build a little bit in the open world metas. This is actually what I'd really recommend, is uh, whenever you have a new build or a new strategy that you want to try, the perfect place to try it out is actually open world, because there are plenty of mechanics there, and you know, you want to still apply boons, and you want to still do damage, all that kind of stuff, right? It's not like those things suddenly vanish into thin air in the open world. They're just as important there, too, to make sure that you're getting things done calmly, without too much panic and fear. Uh, so going to do that, very, very smart idea. We'll go and practice it a little bit, do some open world events, and maybe we'll go ahead and do some strike missions at the end of the day as well. I think we're certainly ready to get ourselves into uh, some entry-level strike mission content. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think we actually vendor those. Yeah, look. Oh, we're getting all the examples in. For example, look at this. This item, people are looking to sell it for three silver and two copper, but it appears that actually selling this to the vendor is actually going to be better than selling it uh, to other players. This is like a very rare thing. Like a lot, almost all the time it's going to be better to sell to other players. But there are some cases where essentially um, it's not going to be worth because the item is just so common that the vendor price basically is actually going to overpower it. And with the tax, it will end up not being worth it or will just be like barely worth it or something like that. So yeah, there you go. Now we can go ahead and sell these uh, things. So if you ever do a, see a situation like this on the trading post, this is going to be an indicator to you that, oh yeah, okay, I should probably just sell this item instead. Uh, as opposed to, um, you know, as opposed to trying to sell it to other players. That's like, again, very rare scenario, but does happen, so you should be aware of it. The merchant is no longer scamming us, right? We got a good deal there, some good value. I love to see it. Very, very nice. I love me some value, my friends. Okay. I think we are looking good. That should just be just barely enough gold, I think. Need to sell a few more items here. Few more things need to get thrown away into the insta-sell pile. Let Thank you, Trading Post, for actually working. Please do. Thank you very much. I love to see that. Very good. Continue. Yep. Uh-huh. 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 Yep. Uh-huh. Good. Good. And there it is. Wow. Another four gold. We can get our Celestial Axe. Burn another sigil because I already made one and we're good to go. See, I am a professional Guild Wars 2 gamer. And as a result of that, I would uh, never get bamboozle and waste gold. Ever. I never waste gold. It's impossible. Cannot happen. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's go. So now we should be just about done. Four gold. We can get ourselves that uh, Celestial Axe. Over there, here we go. It is the Pearl Reaver. And we can get another Smoldering Sigil because we had that on our axe, on our other axe. Let's go ahead and buy that Smoldering Sigil again. And then away we go. Delicious. Huge, absolutely huge. We are set up and we are ready to go. And you know what? Look at that disgusting axe skin. I cannot bear to look at it. I think we should actually have some transmutation charges. We do, I have one. Okay, well, this is going to be a transmutation charge well spent. Because we're going to change this putrid, disgusting axe skin into something that is at least half decent with this um, Firebrand's axe. So there you go. Wardrobe. Click on the skin we want. Apply. Boom. Nice. There it is. I love to see that. Huge. And that is actually it. This, uh, this build is, in my opinion, an Excellent starting point for anyone who's looking to play Guardian and get into kind of end game, uh, the end game stuff and start thinking about maybe going into fractals, dungeons basically, maybe getting into raids, maybe getting into strike missions, uh, while also being able to rock solid solo basically everything uh, and also deliver value in a group setting. The variant that I'm playing right now with the axe and the torch, this is very much more of a team oriented build. If I was playing solo, I think I'd be much more inclined to probably not play with the staff and simply play with the scepter that we had. So we'd play an axe uh, torch build and then a scepter uh, torch build. Although if you wanted to, you could actually go ahead and throw the shield 
onto the scepter set as well. This means you kind of have everything, right? We have our axe torch for our super aggressive set in melee when we're up close and we're just going away doing massive damage. And then when we're playing a little bit more defensively, we're maybe kiting away, we're running away. We have a bit more defensive potential. We can immobilize things. We can have a block on our shield of judgment. We can knock things back, block projectiles, all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of like a solo oriented build. And then going with the staff will be more of a team oriented build because it brings a lot of healing with it. It has support attached to it. It's got some uh, buffing potential, all that kind of good stuff. So a lot. Yeah, this is a, this is the good thing about this, right? It's so so um, flexible. There actually, it is so so flexible uh, to do this. It's absolutely insane.